these are the options available in the data foundation for inserting and these are for detecting the tool automatically uh, provides some of the features to detect like uh, if you want to uh, uh, if you want some help from the tool if you are not sure like uh, how which join is suitable and all then we can also select these options like uh, detect join detect cardinality detect row count so that it will automatically detect which join would be suitable for the tables but it is always recommended to give joins from ourselves but whenever uh, if you have a doubt or something then we can uh, go for these options detect options where the tool automatically gives <clears throat> to insert tables in the data foundation first we will create a data foundation then we'll select the insert table option like if you see here this plus symbol is for insert so if we click on this uh, arrow we will see like what do you want to insert do you want to insert tables or insert derived table insert join or insert view insert comment so if you select on insert tables we will get this option like select tables to insert so we already connect uh, created a connection to some database right data source so whatever all the tables there in that connection in that data source are will will be appeared here so based on our requirement we can check the we can select the tables in this check check box and then we can click on finish once we select all the required tables so that all the tables will be inserted in our data foundation we also have option to insert derived table like uh, like if we want uh, some logic to be performed between two tables like if if uh, the required columns are there in two tables and if we want to achieve that logic in single table we can create insert derived table and we need to write formula which we want to achieve and then we can insert that derived table in the data foundation and we can use that table as a normal table and we can provide the required joins and we can use in as a normal <clears throat> uh, we use derived tables in the following situations to create a table with columns from other tables if we want a columns from other tables we can create a derived table and we can pull them using this uh, these uh, uh, formulas to create a single table that combines two or more tables if you want to combine two or more tables into a single table that is called a merger table in that situation also we can create an insert derived table and insert it to create a table that contains a selection of columns from different tables so in a multi source enabled data foundation if you want to include database specific functions in the definition of the derived table you must select database specific syntax so if you want to achieve database if you want to use database specific function we have to use that uh, that kind of uh, if we want to mysql or uh, oracle kind of that kind of database specific syntax we have to use uh, as we uh, as you guys already gone through what are the joins how what are the types of joins and what is the purpose of joins we, this is already covered so we don't need to mention again here uh, in the joining when we insert we uh, tables we will go for joins there we will give like a, on basis of which column we will join mostly we will use the primary key of the table so if you see here table 1 table 2 in the left hand side it is a table 1 right hand side it is a table 2 we are joining table 1 with table 2 the table 1 name is article lookup table 2 name is article lookup criteria so we are joining both these two tables using the primary key article id so article lookup if you see here uh, formula this uh, e fashion public dot article lookup article lookup dot article id is equal to article lookup criteria dot article id so if we select these two things the formula uh, will automatically come will will come here then we will uh, validate here if this is correct or not if the join is validated it will say it is okay then we will set up the cardinality is it a 1 to n or n to 1 that means for one article id in this article lookup there are n article ids in this article lookup criteria so that is kind of one to n join whether it is n to one or one to n actually the tool will automatically detect here if you click on detect it will come up one whether it should be one to n or n to one so that is about cardinality and join 
So once we validate it, it we will click on OK so that the join between article lookup and article lookup lookup criteria will be formed. So in this case, in this way, <clears throat> same method we have to follow for all the tables to join. So here join operator between table one and table two expression. This is the expression. So it will automatically uh, be displayed when we select uh, the columns here. Cardinality is a property of join that describes how many rows in one table match rows in another table. So that is a kind of like for one article ID, there will be uh, n rows, like uh, there will be many rows which will match with that article ID, article lookup criteria. So in that situation, it is uh, set up the cardinality. We can automatically click on this detect and it will by it will come automatically. Here, these are the cardinalities for a join one to one. If uh, one row, if it is a matching with only one row, here one row and one row only there, then it is one to one. One to many, many to one means n to one, many to many means n to n. <clears throat> uh, in our data foundation, we sometimes we uh, will, uh, there will be chances of occurring loops and traps. Loop is like this. If uh, our joints are forming in this kind of scenario, if you see here, uh, from country table to resort, resort to service line, service line to service, service to invoice line, invoice line to back to sales, customer, city, region, and it is again joining with the country table. So it is like a closed path. It is like a closed loop is formed. So in these situations, uh, we will uh, get a problem with the data. So a common type of join problem that return two few rows. So we will not get uh, expected uh, rows of data, uh, but uh, we will get less number of rows if there are any loops formed. So loops occur when joins form multiple path, path between lookup tables. A loop is a set of joints that defines a closed path through a set of tables in a schema. So if, in, if it occurs in the situations, we have to resolve the loop by creating an alias of one table. We can create aliases. The loops can be detected by detecting aliases, detecting context, detecting loops, checking integrity or visual analysis of schema. We can by just by seeing the schema, we can see like there is a loop formed or if the schema is too big and if you're not able to understand, if you click on detect aliases or detect context or detect loops, then it will up, uh, show like uh, one loop is formed, that kind of thing will be there. And checking integrity is also, or if you check on integrity also, it will uh, display like uh, there is a loop formed between these two tables, please resolve that kind of thing will be there. So we can resolve loops by two methods, by creating an alias table or by creating a context. Context is like, a, we will set, uh, context is a collection of joints which provide a valid query path. So we will set up like this path should be followed like that. We will set up that is a context alias is like uh, we can uh, create alias of one table in the loop. Uh, for example, here customer table, we can create alias of a customer table and for one one path, we can use that alias table and for this path, we can use the original table so that uh, that loop problem will be solved. These are the parameters, as I told you earlier, like parameter is like a, a value variable in the universe that requires value at a query time. It is like it, it is useful for uh, to you prompt the user like to supply a value. Uh, if you are uh, only interested to uh, know the uh, uh, what we say uh, to know the data about region of uh, Asia and we don't want other regions data in one uh, universal one report, then we can set up that as a region as a parameter. And it will, whenever uh, we use that uh, report, it will ask the user, like uh, uh, it will ask at the time of generating report itself, it will ask which region you want to go for. Then he can give the region as Asia, then that Asia data will only come into the report so that the performance of report will be better as we are not interested in other regions. The data is will be less and the performance will be better. List of values is, uh, uh, again, we told you like uh, if uh, for year object, we can provide the list of values 
for around 30 years where we perform the analysis so that uh, that is uh, that is given along with the object so that whenever user selects that prompt he can select from the given list of values instead of he himself entering the year value he can select from the given values these are the data foundation properties uh, like description summary allow cartesian products multiple sql statement for each context this is useful to resolve context sql parameters these are some properties these are all properties that we can see in the screen these are kind of traps chasm traps <clears throat> There are two types of traps that get formed sometimes in our universe. If too many to one join tables converge on a single dimension table here from orders and from loans, there are too many to one joints converging on a single table. In these situations, if we pull, uh, if we need the data from orders table and also from the loans table, in that situation, we'll get wrong results because of the chasm trap. So for to avoid that trap, we can uh, uh, as here we have this option. Multiple SQL statement for each context. If we click on this, we can uh, resolve that uh, chasm trap context problem. It is actually, uh, it will not here as I told you already, that can be resolved by defining context. We will, uh, context one and context two, we will define the context this customer to order table will be one context that is one path and customer to loan will be other path so we will define two contexts and we will check this option to multiple sql statement for each context so that that problem will be solved now uh, we will create a data foundation once we connect these connections we will just click on new data foundation and we'll say single source and we'll give the name name demo i gave the name like this so once we uh, connect this, it will automatically appear as we already connected to MS Access database. The tables which are there in those database are appearing here. So once uh, we get that, here is the insert option as I told you already. There are options for insert tables, insert derived alias, join, views and all. So we are going to insert tables. So if we click on this, there we will see what are all the list of article lookup, criteria, article color lookup, calendar year, outlet lookup, product promotion facts, promotion lookup, shop facts, calendar year lookup query. So these are all the tables that are there in the database. So we can select whatever all the required tables. So we will select all these tables, article, color lookup as i already selected these two tables it is shown with green tick mark so we do not need to click again if we click again there will be an alias table formed so we do not need it right now so we will click the tables which we require for our analysis we will also keep these aggregated tables i'll let you know what is this aggregated tables later so I have selected the required tables and I'm clicking on finish. Yeah, so for the tables, um, the requirement will let you, you, you will know from the requirement, the tables you need to select, right? Yeah, yeah. the project team, they will give all the information in an Excel or kind of thing like a, what are all that what is the data source that configuration everything will be done from their side they will give the table names and also they will provide the join between the tables like on which uh, uh, like uh, i will tell you here uh, here article id is uh, they will provide the joins along with the tables so that we can follow that document and we can create a universe we do not okay. need architect will uh, provide that information because we are not sure like from functional side which is correct for what so articles will artic architects will provide the document the developers will do that okay thank you yeah. so for example if we take uh, 
uh, if you see, there are two types of uh, tables in a, any schema. One is a fact table. Fact table contains all the key figures like sales revenue, quantity, so all the number which are which are very interesting, I mean, important for the business. So here, if you see here, amount sold, quantity sold, margin, these are the key figures. If you see here, one, two, one, two, one, two means it is, these, these are the numbers. So fact tables are the tables which store number related data or KPIs or uh, measures. We actually say measures for these uh, kind of objects. Uh, margin, amount and quantity, revenue, everything is a measure, measure here. Uh, article, product name, state, country, the text, text data is we call as a dimension table. So fact table stores the measures and the primary keys of all other dimension tables. Please remember it. Fact tables stores all the measures and the primary keys of all the dimension tables. Whereas the dimension tables they store the information about that particular dimension. If you see here promotion, it will store the information related to that promotion ID, promotion flag. If you see here calendar table, it contains the uh, dimensions related to calendar, week, month, year. So outlet, it is a store related data. So shop name, address, manager, those kind of data will be there in these dimension tables. Whereas this fact table stores the measures and the key uh, primary keys of all other tables like the foreign keys we can say so if we take this shop fact table uh, we will put in this uh, middle always that uh, we will try to keep the fact table in the middle and the dimension tables in the sides just for our uh, visibility purpose because this uh, fact table will be joining with all other dimension tables. So it is better to keep in a middle. So I'm putting it in middle. This is article lookup. So first we have, what we have done is we have created a data foundation connection, data foundation, and we have inserted the tables as of now after the and we are setting uh, tables like we will keep the fact table in between and all other dimension tables in the sides so this is the fact table which is important here this is also one kind of a fact table here product promotion facts this is the main fact table so first we will join out outlet lookup yeah outlet lookup table so we after inserting the tables we will join the tables with the primary ids actually they will only provide the uh, primary keys so i'll let you just let you know like here shop id is the primary key of this outlet lookup so shop by shop ID only, the data will be uniquely distinguished. All other shop name and all might be same, but shop ID will be unique in this table. So shop, uh, the fact table also stores the primary keys of other dimension tables. So here, there will be shop ID here also. So what we need to do is click on this shop ID and just put here this shop ID and double click on this. Sometimes if you if we wrongly put also, we can again select here. If we, if this is a shop name is selected also, we can check here. From outlet lookup shop ID to shop facts table shop ID. We can click like this. So left table shop ID and right table shop ID. So we will just validate it, whether it is correct or not, this formula. See, we, had, we just selected here. Automatically, the expression already formed. We will validate it. It said it is saying that expression is valid. The expression was successfully validated. So in the cardinality, we don't need to give as a one to n or n to one. We don't need to think about it. We can just click on detect. It will automatically come up. So one to n, the relation is one to n. We will click on okay. <clears throat> Previously, when we did not 
put the cardinality we when we did not click on that it will uh, the question mark came once we put that and we validated it the question mark has gone now so this join is proper now so there we we formed uh, there is a we created join between these two tables in the similar way we will create the joints with other tables also uh, we will now we will go for article lookup table there yeah. Uh, article ID is the primary key of this article lookup table. So fact table will also store the primary keys of other dimension tables apart from the measures. So where is the article ID? We can just see or we can just put somewhere. We can drag like this also. If you see here also it comes like a color code. We can put like here also, but here we can change article lookup of article ID shop facts also we should join with the same primary key so article id and we will validate here this is va successfully validated we will detect it we will put this okay and now we will go with the article color lookup yeah this table we will put it here We can put it anywhere just for our uh, understanding purpose. I am dragging. You can click any, uh, you can put this anywhere, but to uh, show it in a neat format, I am keeping like this. Article color lookup here also, article ID is a primary key here. Here actually, we will uh, join with uh, two tables like uh, they have given. So, one second. Sorry. We will just put like this and we will double click on it. And now we will write the formula like uh, it should match with article ID here and article ID and also color. We will one second. We will just click on control and we will select color code also in both the places. So it is like a complex join, like a article color lookup dot article ID shop facts dot article id and article color lookup dot color code and shop facts dot color code we will detect it here one to n we will validate whether it is correct or not it is valid so here if you see this two as we are uh, using two columns the kind of join is looking different it is okay now we will go with the product promotion facts table here also we will go use the article ID only. Article ID here, article ID here. We will detect it. It will come as one to one. Validate it. It is valid. Actually, mostly in our projects, we don't uh, create a universe from the scratch, but it is good to know like where we do what and all that is for understanding purpose i am uh, trying to explain you uh, here it is a universe maybe it is one kind of modeling that we are doing in business objects everywhere if it is a sap hana or sap bw they also do some kind of modeling using joints and all the ui may be different but the process that they do is very similar here so if we know one uh, tool modeling, it is more or less similar. So basics are important. That's the reason I am explaining like uh, in detail, but uh, don't worry about uh, like if we are, if you're not clear also, it don't worry because we will not use, I mean, we will not uh, do it as a daily job. We will create reports as a daily job. This universe enhancement is very rare. So you don't need to worry about it uh shop facts i just i'm just putting it here everything in detail so that when we are creating reports it should not be like uh, we should understand what we are doing that's the reason i am uh, to use the reports to create a reports we are using those objects so after doing all this hard work only we are able to create uh, use those objects that thing we should understand and we should know so to know the importance of all this modeling i am trying to explain here Product promotion facts is over. So 
<clears throat> shop facts week id to calendar year week id here to use the calendar uh, objects like year month and all we will join with the week id here week id from on the both the tables we will validate it and we will detect it we'll click on okay and product promotion facts <clears throat> Here also there is a week ID, so we will join. These joins will be given by the business or architect itself, so we should we do not need to worry about it. Promotion lookup, promotion ID. product promotion facts so here the promotion id is the primary key here is also promotion id is there in the product promotion fact so this is one more fact table as i already told you article lookup criteria article id article lookup article ID. here article id and the criteria Article. See, you can see the question mark here. If we are not put, uh, if we are not keeping the cardinality, if we are not detecting, the question mark is coming. So, click on this. The question mark will go away. This is about the join. So, these are the aggregated tables. That uh, topic I'll explain later. What are these aggregated tables? So in this way, like uh, we will select the required tables and we will join, create joints and we'll put the cardinalities. It is about data foundation layer. Now what we can do is we can check integrity. Okay, we will uh, just to check whether what we did is uh, right or not, or uh, if there is any schema issue, then here this there is an option like check integrity. Here we can check whatever we want to check tables, joins, parameters, which levels we did not create it. So we can check like that and check integrity. It will come up like there is a loop, loop got formed. It is saying. So we can avoid that loop by creating context or by creating an alias. Where is the roof? Uh, we can see. We can click insert alias table. Maybe we can uh, this join we can give to week ID to this alias table and we will remove this. How oh, if we check integrity? Yeah, now it is everything is okay. So that is the way to resolve. We can just right click on the table where the loop is getting formed. We can insert alias table. It will automatically give some other name. So we can split the join as uh, there is a loop getting formed between product promotion, shop facts, calendar. So these three tables are uh, joined with each other and it is there is a loop formed. So what we do is calendar table is joined with product table, right? The, so we can create alias of this and only for that calendar table, instead of joining with this product table, we can join with the alias. So there will be same kind of objects will be there in this also. So we can avoid like that. 
so that is about uh, uh, alias so we have we have, we understood how the loop is formed and how we can uh, resolve it so that is about uh, loops and all so i'll just show you like uh, what is this uh, Yeah, this is about our data foundation. These aggregated tables, there is a some concept beyond it. When <clears throat> aggregated tables are like, uh, there are, uh, these are like, uh, these tables are aggregated to per year, per quarter, per month, like that aggregated. So uh, if you want to get the, uh, if, if in our report, if you want to see, uh, see the sales revenue of 2018 year, it is combination of all the months, right? So instead of uh, uh, calculate, giving it for uh, all the months and then summit, summing it up in the report level, if we use the aggregated uh, tables and if we use these things in the formulas to go for the first priority, then what it do is first it will get if we, if our report is yearly based so it will get the result from this table so that uh, the calculations instead of doing from the reporting layer the calculations are being done in here database layer so that the performance of the reports will be better so for that purpose only we use this aggregated tables and we use that in the formulas okay i'll uh, show you here like uh, already existing measures if i show you the formula you will understand if you see here this is the formula for the sales revenue what they did is at the rate aggregate aware sum of aggregate year quantity this is one table this is the other table which is uh, set for the monthly level otherwise it is normal shop facts table so first priority is given to this table. If we are only using for yearly data, by uh, the data will come from this table. So uh, if we are using for uh, per day, if we are in, in report, we are also adding month and date, then getting result from these tables will not be sufficient. So at that time, it will come from the normal fact table. So in this way, if we write the formula, it will take the, uh, benefit of this aggregate aware function so that the result is coming from the, the aggregation the sum is happening at the database level which will uh, improve the performance of the report and which will uh, be helpful to not to load the reporting server so in that scenario we will create the key figures like this at the rate aggregate aware and we will use this formula which is a default one this for this also you can uh, for more understanding, you can Google it, but uh, it is a, the same concept like uh, to use that aggregated tables in our reporting layer, we will use this uh, at the rate aggregate aware function and we will keep the priority like first priority will be given to this table, second priority is this, last priority is this. So based on our report, it will go and fetch the values. So for all these things, uh, for quantity sold also, this is the formula of quantity sold. If you see here, here also we are using that at the rate aggregate ever. Uh, we can take from this R, we can use the normal fact table quantity sold. So it is about uh, at the rate aggregate ever. So after creating a data foundation layer, we will go and create a business layer. Business layer is like this. Yeah, like we will put some classes. Uh, if you see here, I can go and new attribute. I can put something. I'll put year name just for demo purpose and trailing. It need not to be attribute. It can be a dimension. Here it is telling what is the type of measure is as I already told you, you should be familiar with these terms. Dimension is like a text object, text objects which has a text data like state, calendar, year, month. These are come under dimensions. Measure is a number data, numerical data. 
like sales revenue, quantity, margin, profit, discount, these all come under measure. So year name is a dimension. So I just put as a dimension and I can go here. Year is coming from the calendar table. So calendar year, I can just put like this year calendar year look if, if i double click on it it will come i'll validate it so like that we can create these objects it is already these formulas are also will be given by the architects or uh, we will be having some demo to understand and we can create but most of the scenarios we will not go and create entire universe in my 10 years of experience i did not create any universe from the scratch but it is better to have an understanding. If there is any enhancement required, we can directly go and do that. If there is any table need to be replaced, if we need to replace the table, always remember like uh, if there is a, if any, it is like a tip. Uh, so if in a project, uh, if there is a requirement to replace some outlet lookup table, uh, why do we get this uh, scenario is like, uh, Maybe they are uh, the project people or the database people. They are replacing the old tables with a new table because of some redundancy or something. So in that situations, they will ask us to replace the table with a new table. So in that uh, scenario, what we have to do is generally what we do is we will delete this table <clears throat> and we will insert that new table and we will have to map the joints and all but that is not a best practice because if we delete a table, the objects which are related, which are associated with the table, they will use the formula. And also the joints, we will, they will be gone. So instead of directly deleting the table, if we need to replace the other table, what you can do is you can create, what you can do is you can go and uh, rename the table with the new table, you can create an alias kind of thing so that you can just go and rename the table. Then Yeah, we can do like this also replace by derived table or alias table or database table. We can replace in this way also. I think in the universe designer, there was a, I mean, old tool I told you, right? UDT. There, it, there was, it was option like a rename, but I think uh, here it is uh, more advanced. Like we can replace by some other table. We can just click on replace by and we put database table and we can select the table so that the joins and it's uh, uh, associated objects will not get disturbed so that there will not be much of rework. So actually in our projects, we will get those kind of requirements only to add any object in the business layer with some, they will only provide formulas. We can just go and click on the adding the objects there and we will click on the formula and uh, we, we can add that and we can export to repository or we can replace the tables or we can change the joints these kind of enhancements only will come but uh, in real time we will not get that uh, requirement of creating a universe from the scratch because these days we are mostly working on hana views or other databases other data sources so other if it is a bex query we do not even need to create a uh, this much of data foundation all these things we will just create a bscs connection and we are done. We can directly use that in our reporting layer. So I think a basic understanding of uh, universe is uh, that uh, knowledge will be enough for our uh, projects and the reporting purpose. So this is done right now. We have created a data foundation layer by using the required by inserting the required tables by proposing the required joins by detecting the cardinalities 
and uh, the loop is also formed and we have resolved that loop also by using an alias table. So that is done. So if you see here resolving loops, we can create an alias table or we can create a context. Parameters and list of values uh, we have already discussed. Showing and profiling values in a table. This is show table values. We also have option to show table values just to see like what kind of data is stored in that. Calculated column is a new column in a table that is the result of a calculation based on one or more columns of the same table. Like it is like a formula we will create. A row count, it gives the number of rows in a database tables and can be detected and stored in the data foundation. Merging tables lets you insert a derived table into the data foundation that consists of the combined columns from two or more tables linked by joints. It is like a, we will create a table using two or three tables. We will create one table. So in that scenario, we will merge it. But that requirement is very, uh, it is not very often. These are the some properties, preferences, options, like how, where are, what are the options available, like custom data foundation view, highlight related table. If you click on highlight related table, it will highlight. So these are some properties and preferences. Chasm trap we already covered. So we have created a data foundation. This is a demo.cns. CNX. Once we create a connection, it is automatically .cnx. When we publish that connection to repository, the extension will be .cns. So that means secured connection. .dfx means this data foundation layer is saved as a .dfx. And the business layer, if you see here, the already created universe, it is .blx. So that is about the naming convention, how it automatically creates. And uh, I was telling about this. Under data foundation, I have uh, told you, right? These insert options will be here. Detect options are here. Detect aliases, detect joints, cardinalities, row count keys. And if you want to arrange the tables, if you don't want to arrange it manually, we can arrange by clicking on this auto arrange tables. It will arrange tables for us. So these are all some options available in this. And we can also save view as image. Maybe we can save this as an image. These are the options here, aliases and contexts. It will, if we put any alias tables, it will show up here like as we have created one alias to resolve the loop. So alias tables, here it comes up like this. Data foundation. If we just directly jump to data foundation, we can click on this and we can go there. Parameters and list of values. If we create anything, it will come under here. If we attach any object to the, uh, uh, I think I can show it for the already created universe. Parameters and list of values. Uh, it's not there, they are not using. Yeah, if there are any attachments are there, that can be seen here. So if we quickly jump, want to jump, we can jump using these options to data foundation or connection and all. Uh, that is about uh, data foundation layer. So today we have covered data foundation.